Thank you for giving the Experience Track and Home Award, John Taylor. that I did for this, I was holding something. Is there, is there nothing, do I not actually? <laughs> I don't know if I can do this without something in my hand. So. Thank you for this wonderful award. Thank you so much. Well, I was wondering, Leonard, do you have one for Robert? Because I, I really think Robert, It's, uh, this is like getting a Grammy for the best chair of the year. <laughs> um, thank you, Robert. I mean, seriously, man. I mean, you're a great inspiration. And, uh, you know, you're out there in the public sector uh, more than I am. And uh, whenever I see you, you know, on TV, and, and you looking as good as you do, you bastard. Um, you know. <laughs> You've overcome the worst of you to be the best of you, and it's, it, it, it's great to see. And, uh, and I think, we're, I, I'm sure we're all grateful that Iron Man is sober. Yeah. Because that could, be, that could be really nasty. That could be um, uh, writers in treatment, Leonard Bushel. Leonard, I've known for, um, I've known for a long time, and uh, you know, I've been happy to watch you know, encouraged to watch this foundation of his grow over the last few years. And uh, Leonard came to me a few months ago, gleefully, saying, hi, you've published a book now. You're a published author. We can honor you. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, over the course of the, uh, the writing and the, the uh, publishing of the book, I, I was going backwards and forwards on whether it was something I really should have done, for many of the reasons that Robert mentioned. You know, was it something that I really wanted? I, I would say it was two days on, one day off. Two days, I was glad I did it. One day, I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> but I have to say, when Leonard did, uh, when, when Leonard said that to me, one cold morning in Studio City, I thought, I'm glad I did it. I'm really fucking glad I did it. And uh, I remember coming in, when I came into the program in Los Angeles, a lot, a lot of musicians were getting into rehab through the Musician's Assistance Program. And a lot of musician friends of mine that, that couldn't afford uh, to get the kind of treatment that, that I had been able to afford. Uh, and uh, I see Leonard, you know, getting this going and doing it for writers in a city that, that need, with a lot of writers that need help. Um, I had a fantastic rehab experience. I mean, I'm so happy to see Sierra Tucson and one of the sponsors here because, uh, you know, I, I went into rehab uh, but a few years ago, and I thought, it, you know, I mean, it only took one for me. I, I mean, I just, I went in there, and uh, it, it worked. And, and so far, it's been uh, so far so good. And uh, I felt at the time that it was exactly the education that I needed at that point in my life. Uh, that phrase that we hear all the time, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I mean, it felt like an entire fucking faculty showed up to meet me <laughs> at, that, at that point in my life. And after 30 days, I remember I came out after 30 days in Sierra Tucson, and I was at uh, Tucson Airport, and uh, Michael Douglas was on the cover of Vanity Fair. And, uh, you know, Michael Douglas talks about his, um, his sex addiction, and, uh, and he had spent 30 days at this Rolls-Royce of treatment centers. And uh, I suppose ever since I did that, I've been, you know, it's never gone away, that experience. It's hardened inside me. And, um, and I wish more and more now that that kind of education was available to people, anybody that needs it, basically. You know, that, I mean, I was, you know, I was fortunate. I could afford it, you know, I could take the time off work. I didn't have to go cap in hand to, to an employer. Well, Nick Rhodes, I did have to, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he was supportive. Um, but I didn't have to go to an insurance company, and, uh, you know, I'm hoping maybe one day you know, in the same way that very few people got to, got to go to university 50 years ago, and now, you know, if you really want it, you can go. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe in a few years, anybody that really needs the kind of treatment and the kind of education that places like Sierra Tucson are offering people at a premium will be able to get it somehow. I don't know. But the kind of work that Leonard's doing... 
is the kind of thing that is going to make that come to pass over a period of time. I want to thank my wife, Gila, because she's been with me every step of the way, and I wouldn't be here without her. And, <laughs> and I have to say, we, we really struggled with tonight's dress code. <laughs> and uh, can you stand up for a moment, Guy? Just let the people see you, because... Because I had my tux on, and she had her Birkenstocks on. And then, and then we saw the, the dress coat. No tuxedos, no Birkenstocks. I mean, I had to physically... Well, I had to strap her into those leather boots. Anyway, hopefully she'll be working, wearing the Birkenstocks later. Steve Jones is here. Can we give Steve Jones a round of applause? Because Steve's been... Steve has been um, my closest sober friend on this journey. And, um, and you know, when I told him about this award, <clears throat> you know, he said, uh, never mind that bollocks. But it's, but it's an award, for, it's an experience, strength and hope award. That's all bollocks. <laughs> anyway, Steve, I, if I had it, I would dedicate it to you. <laughs> This belongs to you now. <laughs> Steve, I'm dedicating this to you. Um, when I was asked to, uh, I was approached about writing a memoir. There's been a real rush on in the publishing business. Blame it on Keith Richards. But uh, the, last, the last couple of years, there's been a real rush on for uh, musicians. To, to write memoirs, I think because people have realized that actually musicians can write memoirs. And, um, you know, when I was approached, I knew what they wanted, I knew what the publishers wanted, I knew what the, the, uh, the fans wanted. And, uh, you know, I, I felt there was room for, for that experience, the glory years, Duran Duran, Men in Makeup, you know, what is the reflex really about? You know, is Nick Rhodes as weird as he looks? You know, I knew I could take on those kinds of difficult issues and find a way to, to write about them. But, but I also knew uh, that it was a memoir, uh, and these are Leonard's words, that could not, uh, that, uh, could not ignore recovery. And I didn't want to ignore recovery. I mean, you, you know, the time that I've spent sober have been some of the most, you know, they've been the best years of my life, and I've had some of the most amazing experiences um, in this third act of my life, if you will. Um, and I felt that, particularly that experience in, in rehab, I wanted to try to get that across in the book. It was as important to me to convey that experience as it was to convey what's it like to get your first number one, you know, what's it like to play Madison Square Gardens. It was really important for me to leaven the craziness of all that kind of experience with, with what came later. And um, it's a fine line, you know. It's, um, you know, again, um, Leonard refers to it as promoting the sober dialogue, which I think is a nice way of putting um, getting out there in the public sector, if you like, um, <clears throat> talking about getting clean, how to, how to get clean, how to stay clean. Um, you know, I had to really, I mean, I was, I was lucky. I had, a, I had a ghost writer working with me. He was sober too. When we, had a, when we were having a really bad day, we'd go to a meeting. When we were having a really good day, we'd go to a meeting. We process every fucking page of the book through the program, which felt right. And if I was feeling weird, I talked to Steve, I talked to other people that I knew. I, I had to, the book had to be really clean. You know, I'm very aware that we, that so many of us, you know, we're in an anonymous program. We have to maintain an anonymity at the level of press, radio, and in his case, films. But at the same time, you've got this opportunity to share to a larger audience, and you've just got to find a way to do that, which is, you know, which is empowering to those that are out there. I mean, I'm hoping that somebody, if there's anybody out there that's going to read the book, that is maybe it's going to lead them into treatment or it's going to lead them into recovery, I'll figure that it's worth it. Um, I've had a great response to the book. Um, I'm glad that I did it. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have got this award. Thank you all for being here this evening. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.